you're doing a voice memo with your homegirl and then you're like, girl. And that's why I've been saying, like, when it comes to this like shit, you really just gotta... Okay, listen. Today, new background unlocked. We got the rain sounds in the back. I think it's a little... It's a little too loud. Today is an episode of Zanji Does Tea. And this is completely out of my norm. We got minimal lighting, no mic today, and hair, you see my, my hair is not done guys. My hair is not done. We're coming candid today, and this is on purpose, like, I decided like, I'm trying to be consistent, right? I've been saying that for a while, I've been doing it. We're on month two of consistency, and I just feel like I noticed that if I don't just do it anyway, like anyway, anyway, I'm not gonna do it. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but if you don't like astrology, get the hell off my YouTube because you're not gonna like what I'm about to say. But as a Virgo, if you're a Virgo, you know this. If it's not perfect, you're not gonna do it. And I'm telling myself, what will be more perfect? To get it done, to post it, or to not do it at all and then you don't post nothing. What feels worse? Record it in an ugly setting, without the best setup, whatever, or not posting period. And I was like, okay, not posting period makes me feel like shit. So, here we are. And I'm gonna, I don't know, I don't know, listen. This is Angie Does Tea. Yeah, Angie Does Tea episode, I've lost track. But if this is your first time here, really quick before I change the lighting, because it's giving whitewash. The white shirt ain't helping. I just came from vacation, believe that. Like, imagine, imagine. And I'm giving like I wasn't anywhere. Like I wasn't just in Mexico and, and where else? Honduras, period. Like y'all see me taking flights, taking trips, taking boats, cruises. Oh no, but let me be serious. Um, if this is your first time clicking on my video, my channel, anything, I post um I have three series on my YouTube. There's a lot of YouTubers in the world online, right? Let me just tell you what I do on my my stuff. The regular schmegular girl who started a curly hair natural hair journey i know you're like girl but your hair is given straight right now we'll talk about that in a minute so i have three series my hair life advice stuff you know little vlogs little little hair videos where i try things out whatever figure out you're following me on my hair journey and i really want you to be here with me you know here with me where it's like my homegirl try something new i'm gonna try it too i try some pumpkin in my hair and i want you to be like girl she tried pumpkin her hair last week like kind of want to try it like I really trust this girl like her journey's been really cute and I want to watch her videos made me feel inspired to do my own thing you know that's the kind of gist I want you to get when you come here like big sister vibes like bestie vibes my other series um Zanji does chat you probably are like what the hell is the difference between Zanji does see Zanji does chat Zanji does chat is me chatting chatterboxing literally just venting about hot topics, situations, coming of age, life experiences, being your mid twenties. Um, I know it, I'm getting sixteen. No, I'm just kidding. I'm twenty five, <laughs> and even this week, like, I've been like, I'm just, I just share my wisdom, like my weekly wisdom. I'm not a pastor or nothing, <laughs> you know. Cause kind of, it, 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 I wanted to give the vibe of like, you're doing a voice memo with your homegirl, and then you're like, girl. And that's why I've been saying, like, when it comes to this life shit, you really just gotta, right, you know what I mean? Basically. And then my last one, which is what you're watching today, I have a series, girl. We've been having a series for a while where you're supposed to submit stories to my email here. So my agreement was that because I'm a smaller channel, so nobody's really gonna know to submit. Like, that's just, that's just the name of the game. No shame in that. So, um, yeah, if you want to submit, just submit right here. And it's, it's exactly what it sounds like, you know. You submit your tea, anonymous. You know, there's a whole video on how to submit. And it's really easy. Like, don't get discouraged. Like, oh, my God, girl, you got 17 rules. Like, it's really not that deep. But I had one person submit. Shout out to you. I still think about you every day. She submitted, he or she. And it was some good tea. It was some good tea. So, um, submit. And basically what I do in the meantime, since I don't get submissions like that, all love. I go on Reddit. And for the record, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Make sure if you're doing Reddit series, because a lot of people do this now, you need to make sure that the story can be read on a YouTube channel because 
the girls are getting mad. The girls are getting mad that people are coming from YouTube to Reddit, take the stories, that some of them want permission, some of them want the this they they doing some they doing some stuff but um yeah so this is an episode of Zangita's tea and usually go to my other videos you'll see it I have a setup my hair is done nails done everything did and this is natural like a debriefing and today's gonna be a longer debriefing so also I'm like prepare yourself prepare yourself because I'm giving you the the rundown real quick in the beginning but then we're gonna have a little we have a little chitty chat and then I get into the Reddit stories and I usually read like three to four with that being said let me change this lighting because my lighting has like a white effect or like a tanned effect. And I'm just really curious to see if it'll really emphasize my glow. Because I will not lie. I was like, I better get one video after my tan. And I feel like you can see the tan here. But, like, the light is washing me out. So, give me a second. Let's see, you guys. Because I have this thing. I can put it on. Honestly, I have tried to open an Amazon Marketplace so many times. And that shit only works when you have an audience that'll buy it. Because Amazon will eventually delete your profile. Because nobody's buying what you're promoting. But, um, I'll always put it on the, ooh, y'all see the vibe change? Let me see. Let's see how that looks. Ooh, oh my god, what is that? No, I'm putting that shit back on. <laughs> y'all, it's giving fucking, what is it? Like, science lab. Like, what was that? Like, I don't even know. All right, let's get started, you guys. Ooh. Yeah, so if you usually watch these, I'd be like, I'd be... On my laptop got the mic up and it's fine it's fine we're gonna do really candid today like I'm saying like candid candid like SD card is still full with content from the cruise type candid like like I'm ready but not really is there a drink today I don't even have like a topic today I'm gonna go on right on my literal phone but I just want to chill today. I just want to chill with y'all. And I do have some things to get done. So it's like we could chill but like relax, you know. Let me just open the app. But yeah, I just decided let's do a makeup episode. Apparently, I've been doing the series for two years. Like y'all need to get it. Y'all need to submit. My profile. Not y'all watching me struggle. Stop. Yeah, so I'm going to just do a regular makeup. I'm not going to talk about what it is. If y'all really want to know what I use, just comment below. Yeah, you know, while I while I skin this is multitask. So yes, I just came back from a cruise. My first cruise, the cruise went to Mexico and Honduras. Two places in Mexico, one place in Honduras. Um, ten out of ten. And I am editing that content, so it should be out because I like to post in order. But if it's not, what should we even do? I'm always down for a little controversy. 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 <laughs> Anyways, I'm just doing my makeup. Like you know what I'm saying. I'm gonna read it. It's in front of me. Um, apologies in advance if the audio is weird. Anything is weird. Let me get my. We got the everyday makeup bag today. By the way, Marshall. And look at this cute little face. Period. Screenshot right now. Cause that's. Y'all see the products? Okay. Okay. It was so. First of all, guys. Sun infection. Like, what do I look like? The world's whitest person. Like, what the hell is that? Like, you're Dominican girl. Yeah. So sun allergy yeah i literally chilling on the cruise tanning i was like be careful because last time when i went to dr i tanned so much that i like um peeled and i was like no never again <laughs> never again like it literally hurt so bad um <laughs> i'm like here that's all you're gonna get i'm just show up and then just do it but um y'all can fast forward here if y'all want to just get to the stories, whatever, fast forward there. But yeah, it was like, I, yeah, I peeled in DR because I went to DR for my birthday. But this was like, you know, my first little boyfriend family trip with his family. A little moment, you know, a little moment. And his auntie was there too. And I just felt so close to everybody, you know. Even though I live with most of them. <laughs> um, it just, it really made the connection go beautiful. But um, I'm going to say it's right here, right now. The lighting is not set up for no makeup spectacular. So if it looks good in my mirror, if it don't look good here, please don't come for me. As you can see already, my hand is already lighter than my face. I try my best and I have a tan, so I'm trying to adjust to the tan color versus what I got. I, I, like if It would be so beautiful if I can be like, okay, I'm just going to the next color up. No, I'm like in the in-between stage, so I got to like get all artsy and mix foundations and shit. But this is a really tan one per... Yeah, so I got, like, that sunburn. So I was like, okay, definitely let's avoid that. 
So I got even better sunscreen and turned out, you know, whatever. I was chilling. Can y'all still tell the difference in color? Hello. Thing is not giving, dude. Can y'all see it? Mm. But um, yeah, I was just vibing. I was like, okay, we can have like one to two tan tanning days. Like, don't OD. Like, don't overdo it. Um, just don't overdo it. You know, and I was on that cruise for seven days. So I said, okay, two tan days is enough. Like, just do it towards the end so you can get home. Because I'm not going to lie to you. I love filming a good content with a little tan on. Like, it's nothing wrong with that. You know, because I really feel like when I don't have my little tan going, like, I'm giving sickly. Like, I'm giving sick. Like, it's giving, like, do you have a fever? Do you have COVID? Like, I don't like to give that vibe. Do we think this is a perfect match? What do we think? Because I really, I feel like I've been mastering this shit. Anyways. Yeah, I'm in the sun. I literally had ended up having just like one day of tanning. No, one to two days of tanning. Yeah, the two days. Okay. Yeah, chilling that day. I'm like, period. Not the little glow. I come back home because then it's like two days later. First of all, my eczema flared up. My eczema has not flared up in fucking years. Okay, I'm a little ashy bitch. And I was like, the fuck? Like, don't embarrass me like that. <laughs> so lucky for me i had a doctor's appointment right when i came back like my physical when i was like period so i was like hey my eczema i knew that was eczema but then on the contraire because my eczema is usually like in your arms like whatever that is the back back of your elbow it's usually there and like my little neck crevices it's about it and i noticed that i have fucking blisters like and this was my reaction i was like exactly like this Ashy as fuck, like, I'm just kidding. I had, like, little blisters here and shit, and I don't, these, I don't want to, I don't want to fucking find out that this is what I think it is, I'm put it on the screen. I'm waiting. I think these are bruises, because on the plane, I always had my arms crossed with my bangles, and I bruise easily. I'm hoping these are bruises and not aging spots, because I can only do so much. The graze is already too much, and now that, please. But I'm gonna just accept life for what it is, and y'all are really seeing my ADHD in full effect today. But yeah, this was my face when I was like, when I realized that eczema came back. No, but um, I, I was lucky enough, like, I, so yeah, I had little, little blisters, like I said. And then I went to the doctor's and I was like, hey, um, just to let you know, like, what the hell is this? She's like, this is this. And I put it on the screen because I don't remember what the hell, it's how to pronounce it or what. But she was like, yeah, it looks like a mild case of this. Just put aqua for on and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, not the so she confirmed me. Yeah, I was like a little sun allergic reaction. And I was like, okay, soft. Like, are we serious? Like, I can't just be my natural self and bask in the sun anymore. Because I'm going to look like this when I'm done. Like, what? That disgusted me. So, that's my new reality. My grades keep coming in. Let's get into the stories. <laughs> At the end, I'm going to just take my hair out, you know, because I was like, listen, I got to one film while the tan is still here, but two while the hair is still done. And it's like at its last phase before I need to just wash it or gel it back. And if you have curly hair, you know, if you have curly hair, you know, like you got to gel it eventually. You got to gel it eventually. And once you gel it, you can't go back. You cannot go back. Also, like I said, the makeup look crazy. Do not come for me. Cause I'm trying to adjust to the tan color and if I'm giving more orange or browner than usual please don't be problematic it's not my intentions let's read this story it is titled I decided to say F it literally and now I'm a worker what do y'all think about that we live in a time and age where it is a, um I'm gonna say important it is a popular career choice and I want to say, fun fact, I did take a, uh, I was going to say, said it wasn't called that, but it was like a college level course of education, like a psychological review of it. It was such a good class. Like, I learned so much. I became so much more comfortable with the idea of like sex work and not that I was uncomfortable before, but I really just didn't get it. I was like, why would you? But then getting close as as close as I could to sex work through people experiences whatever I was like okay this makes sense as a woman or however you identify this makes sense to capitalize on 
something in the certain way that you are. You know what I mean? Um, it, it was like, oh, yeah, makes sense. BRB. I forgot I gotta put a straw in this shit. Oh, as I was saying. Okay, I hope this straw works. It's not really the straw I made for this, but. And that's the problem with this bottle. Once that ice blocks up. Let's see. Love water. Let's continue. Um. What was I talking about? Yeah. Once you capitalize on. Here's the reality. Cells. And good marketing tactic it's this will never go out of style it's not really style you guys know what I mean like sex will never it's a timeless thing and it's taboo catches your attention like and it makes things sell I don't know why it's appeal sells like look at I even took like a, I don't know if it was really marketing class, but it was very like advertising and look at all these advertisings. Why are you booty naked advertising glasses and why do you want to buy them now? It works, it works, it works, it works. But let's read what this person had to say. Um, if you want to know my opinion on sex work, I think do it if you have the balls to. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, it's really not like, don't think it's just like. Okay, I'm gonna post my booty cheeks. Here comes a 4K in one month. Like, you gotta advertise. You gotta, like, sell your soul. No, I'm just kidding. You gotta, like, you gotta advertise. Like, you gotta push that shit. And sometimes it does, like, work in. Like, there's people that do it anonymously. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't. Like, it's just really... My makeup's looking crazy already. I see it. Bear with me, y'all. Um, it takes a certain kind of person to do that stuff. And my hats go off to you but you have to know how to detach because if you're a very emotional person it's gonna be really hard work for you i'm gonna tell you that right now i'm gonna tell you that right now i know some people in it and they just built for that and the money is cute it is it is it is like and make sure let me tell you all this real quick let me put y'all on if you're going to pursue that route of life, make sure it's legal in your state. Not here. I, I'm not saying everything I do is uh, legal per se, but be careful because when it comes for taxes and stuff and you're doing sex work is considered, I, sorry if I'm wrong, but I'm, I think it's like considered like a, a form of prostitution, which is like, let's relax. Um, <laughs> but like, I think where I live, like it's illegal. So when you do taxes, like you can't just say sex work cause you can like be penalized for it. Penalized. I don't really use that word. So I don't know how to say it, but you can get in trouble and I don't want that to happen y'all. Look up your laws, organize your lies and move smart. That's all I have to say. Let's read this cause I'm just wasting so much time. This person said, I decided to say fuck it. And literally now I'm a sex worker. I'm almost 28 years old. Also don't do this if you're 16 like it's so many people turn 16 17 14 don't there's so many i started a job when i was 13 as a camp counselor like it's so many different jobs out there please don't feel like that's the only way don't let social media make you think that's an easy quick buck like it's not that like please don't like please wait till you're 18 or hopefully even older but when you're legally an adult, please, because that's just fucking, like, you're going to get people in trouble, you're going to get yourself in trouble, you're going to make put yourself in a situation that you don't have to. It's like, you know? She said, I'm almost 28 years old. I went to college, couldn't find decent work in my field. Did side hustle after side hustle, internships with the empty promise of a career path, all while working full-time at whatever retail store I could find. Retail sucks, literally. It has led to nothing but broken dreams, a non-existent credit score, and a nurse ratchet level of contempt for my fellow man due to work in retail for nearly a decade what is a nurse ratchet level of content you lost me there well a few weeks ago i decided to join a cuddling agency where people hire you for cuddle sessions have y'all heard about this before comment down below because i have and i'm a big cuddler and i remember seeing something like this when i was like young at my grandma's house like doctor apollo you're like what you mean at your grandma's house no i was watching doctor apollo and there was this episode about it and i 
spent like it was such a core memory i was like how do you sign up like i love a good cuddle but like i've never wanted to cuddle with a stranger like is that just me anyways yeah it's exactly what i thought people hire you for a cuddle session i thought to myself i wasn't held enough as a kid what could go wrong trying to monetize this a lot <laughs> Uh, well, it turns out that most of the clientele are horny, middle-aged men that are either trapped in a dead marriage or just traveling for work constantly and need a stress relief. And on top of that, if you go the extra mile, they pay double. Oh, no. And I was tired of eating vegetarian just because meat is too expensive. I'm now making three times more money for a fraction of the work hours while I still work my retail job as a steady gig. I plan to cut my hours back as I build my client list. Do I feel slightly disgusted and ashamed of myself? Obviously. Oh. Does that negate the feelings of pride I had when I was able to take my roommates out and pay for their meals without sweating about the bill? Hell no, I can finally take care of myself and the people I love. I went to the eye doctor for the first time in years. I have a dentist appointment coming up for the first time in six years. I have a savings account now. I can afford to get my nails done once a month now. I'm starting to save up for a house on my own. I feel like the Scarlet O'Hara after the war. Her with these examples. Her or him with, or them with this, these examples. Like, what are we talking about? God is my witness. I'll never go hungry again. And if I have to marry that guy, then so be it. And then she add, they add that um, I appreciate everybody's support. And do want to clear up, I have a multitude of safety protocols in place. I practice kickboxing with my roommates. Kickboxing with my roommates for stress, stress relief. And to have taken self-defense classes. This is not a long-term solution. Uh, I plan on saving as much as I can to start my own business or go back to school to study a different field. Okay, period. Because I was going to say, you're giving me kind of like, oh, well, I'll just do this forever. And here's the reality of those kinds of jobs. It's like, once whoever deemed your sex appeal gone, like, it's no work left. And that's just the ugly reality of that field. I mean, I read so many books too about like, because it's really interesting to me how sex appeal can get you so far. But um, I've even had TikToks come across like of bottle service girls who got fired because they possibly gained weight, became moms, or they were, like, it was decided by management that they weren't cute enough. Or had the sex appeal enough for the role. And it's like. That must feel so fucking shitty. And that's why you always need a plan B. And I'm so happy to hear that this person is not making this their forever thing. Because eventually you'll probably reach an age demographic that's not really preferred. And I mean I don't think. I don't know. Because I don't want to put words into this person's mouth. But. Do you really want to cuddle with these so-called men that you're labeling them as for the rest of your life? Like, comment down below what y'all think, because that's the thing about side gigs is like, and even retail too, like, I really want people to strive for more outside of retail. I feel like if loving retail makes sense if you are a fashion girly. Um, and as a business owner to several businesses now, it is not easy and running several businesses but still struggling financially like it is not easy to run a business especially if you have no employees no drive um self-employment entrepreneurship like that requires a lot of delusion a lot of hope a lot of self-discipline and it's cute on paper like oh i, I own businesses but I'm in that place where it's like, do you own businesses? You know, you own them, but are you successful in them? And I love that you're striving for bigger and better things. But I want you to really sit down and consider your calling. And I really feel bad when people take on a business and then they're like, oh my God, this is so much work. Like I'm drowning in work. And I know I'm meant to be a businesswoman because that shit excites me. That shit makes me wake up. And I've always, always pretended to open a business when I was a kid. Like, you know when you're a kid and you're playing by yourself or with your friends. And 
I used to make fake money, like a register, like my own products. I would sell it. Like when we sold those candies in school, and I know y'all don't know talk about it. I was driven like I was like oh I love that how can I become better um I want to open my business one day I would research how those chocolate businesses work and it's cool like I don't like I don't know I had um I was always surrounded to by business women um were they successful I can't really tell but it's something that excites me and that's how I know that I'm built for that like I do have my moments where I wake up I'm like I don't want to do this today but when I don't do it I'm like something's missing that's when you know right but let's read what the person said what people said in the comments for this person because yeah and everybody like I've really never met people that say retail work is my life like I love retail work like uh, retail I feel like hospitality jobs have more benefits and like a better a better leverage on life than like in retail yeah you can work your way up to corporate and i kind of like corporate stuff it's corporate stuff too but i hate the environment like it's so unnecessary so toxic for no fucking reason like let's be for real it's just paperwork relax i'm realizing now at my age like there is an abundance of money and an abundance of ways to make money but your drive will really set the tone for you and your confidence level and, and how you show up for yourself and your passions like shit is hard as fuck but if you do it the rewards will be there hold on let's let this dry yeah i tried this i don't want to give myself creases but i tried this i think it's pretty dry enough but i couldn't find my usual setting spray so i just tried this one out so fucking good i tried urban decay all night or whatever that shit looked like somebody spit on my fucking face white shit and they just i hated it i hated it everyone's supportive in the comments everyone's telling her be careful um and to definitely strive for a better option and that was a cute read and i think i had a lot to give y'all on that so we could literally move on with that wait this is a long ass one what what the hell oh we could just finish with this one y'all okay the comments before i even read this somebody said this is the kind of shit that keeps me up at night Ooh. okay this sounds creepy as fuck trigger warning because i don't know what to expect hold on all right y'all i did my mascara off camera because i don't know when to shut up and we need to read this long story and i want to show y'all the hair eh? okay i'm putting on the screen the actual results of how this looked but it still looks pretty good the front of my hair is just frizzy as fuck so but i got layers done it look redone i got um really quick if you're doing a curly hair natural journey please know that straight hair straight hair straight hair <laughs> Straight haircut and a curly haircut are very different. So, I don't have a strict preference of how my hair would look in an afro as long as it don't look fucking crazy. Some people have to be careful when they do that though. So, I went ahead and I bit the bullet and I just got a haircut at a regular like Dominican salon. Um, and I haven't seen my curls in afro yet. But I have high hopes that it won't look crazy. Like she said, I she kind of worked the layers that I already had from my curly cut and just kind of... Trim the ends, added some more bang. Um, but over the weekend my roots sweated out, so I was you'll see, yeah. Yeah. She's she's coming back. Ooh. Who is she? Now we going from her. I'm like, I'm dead. Anyways, how do I look guys? Do you love? Do you love? Um, yeah, I'm probably gonna wash this one because my roots are just giving like look. Ooh. Y'all know when the roots is wavy like that. It's time to stop. It's time to stop. But she did so fucking good. Like, and I have high hopes that, like, when I heat, when I wet my hair, it's going to look, um, my curls will not be, like, fucked up. Because, um, she literally had a really great technique to slick my shit down. And this was, like, minimal heat. And plus... If my shit's fucked up, I know where I can go back, right back to. So, 
her but no it looks really good and i love it like she ate she ate she ate um and I, it's very apparent that my hair looks healthy and yeah if my hair also does go back to normal after this i will i will make it a natural thing because um like maybe like um once every four months or something i don't know because it's nice to just relax like curly hair is so fucking much and i'm trying to find a way to make this look cute on camera because it's like it looks cute in person but on camera it's kind of looking crazy as fuck it's giving me like dookie head like yeah i love it it's so good let's read this last story and it's the last one i know i said i only i do two to three three to four stories but this is like y'all okay this is the title i used to work at a self-storage facility comment down below do those places creep you out because they creep me out i used to work at a self-storage facility you'd be shocked at what people hide in my first year of junior college, I picked up a part-time job at the local self-storage facility. If you've never been to one, it's basically a cluster of metal storage units arranged in grids where people keep their extra furniture. I managed the front desk in the evenings, often with a girl named Blank. I don't know, that's her name, so I'm going to say Blank. Um, most nights were boring. Blank and I would sit around doing homework. Yeah. If I could give y'all a tip, please always choose a job that you could do your homework at. That saved me a lot of stress, time. I co-signed that. Like, yeah. I just wanted to throw that in there. Okay, so they would sit around doing homework, ex exchanging stories about their lives, occasionally buzzing a car into the lot, um, or helping a renter with the stuck lock. Our manager came in only once a week and hated working there even more than we did. His name was Blank, Blank too, and his accent was so thick we mostly nodded our way through conversations with him. A few times a month he'd bring his ancient golden retriever who loved laying my shoes while I sat on at the desk. Sorry, this person got a few little typos. Those were my favorite nights at work. Blank too expected me to walk the facility each night checking for unlocked locks spills weird noises smells or anything out of order he'd always say you are a man you go blink should stay blink does not go in the dark um i understand his concern every few months the cops would show up and we'd be forced to open a unit damn there's a low budget meth lab inside or otherwise some kind of redneck pharmacy whose contents would land a man in the in jail for a decade Oh, excuse me. The manager would say, if you smell, you call. Like, call the police. He was a decent guy, but he didn't like his dog much. The dog belonged to his late wife, and the manager made it very clear that he got stuck with him when she died. The dog got most of his affection from us, and we didn't mind it one bit. Aside from the rules and babysitting his dog, the manager rarely bugs me. But he chat with Blank on his way out of the office each night. Maybe you teach me science, get us both bigger money. He obviously thought she was cute and I couldn't blame him. What the manager didn't know was that Blank was a shameless kleptomaniac who would sometimes rob his office for the master key. After a few dens with drugs were uncovered on the premises, the cops made a switch to company issued locks that could be opened on short notice. There was a lot of legal gray area around this so the manager never let us use it. But the police ordered that the key remain on site in the event the manager wasn't around and they needed to get into someone's unit. The job got a lot more interesting the first time Blank showed me the key. First of all, now I'm, I'm anxious because y'all better, it better be no fucking kleptos near my unit. Hello. On dead nights when no renters came in for hours, she and I would open a few units and peek inside. Y'all are weird as fuck. Like, I just got pissed off. It's something about people not respecting boundaries. And it's another thing about my nose getting stuffy randomly. Sometimes we'd make a game of it. We'd read the owner's application, which listed their name, age, and profession. Then we'd try to guess what kind of crap they'd store. That's so weird. Like, I'm not going to lie. Y'all are kind of weird. And, and a little boundary uh, breaking for that. Like, I'm not happy with that to work that building like professional cons we'd pick a floor try to finish up a couple of units in 15 minutes that we dared to be away from the desk the best part was watching the dog snoop around and bark excitedly when he got too excited we always let him lead the way 
Our manager was none the wiser. More than half the security cameras in the building were dead, and the others were almost never recording. The manager never bothered to replace old tapes. Recipe for disaster, literally. 90% of the units we cracked had furniture and clothes. We'd call these duds. Okay. Because mine is giving dud. Um, there was never anything interesting in them, but the others had valuable sports memorabilia or collector's item. On principle, I never allowed to take anything and... Oh, I never allowed Blank to take anything and she came to respect my rule. She was taking shit without you. I'm just letting you know that right now. Like, no. After all, it would be both our asset if something was, went missing. No. If she's a klepto and she can do it right, she'll do it without you. And in a few months, we covered only three floors in the five-story building. We found all kinds of interesting things, both, gr both great and terrible. One guy, I'll call him, God, all these names, I'm just going to read it, I can't. I'll call him Joe, kept a meticulously arranged shrine made entirely out of cutouts from adult magazines of the 1970s. Perhaps this wasn't so interesting on its own, but the fact that Joe was the art conservative reverend of our town, the town's biggest church, made it pretty spicy. Um, on another occasion, we found a mostly empty unisphere of filthy sheetless mattress in the center and an old video camera facing it. Liz told me about people, that's this who blank has been the whole time. Liz told me about people trying to use storage facilities as a place to sell, but just the look of this one made me feel something else was up. It took days of careful watching, but eventually we noticed that this unit's owner, one Mr. Clean, was driving in with a teenage girl crouched in his back seat and not the kind on the legal side of 18. Ugh. Trigger warning, because I know where it's about to go. That was the day we decided to make sure the cameras were on in his corridor. We told Stefan, and he said he'd take care of it. The unit was cleared out the next time I came in. One day, Liz called me on my night off. I was surprised to hear from her. We weren't that sort of we weren't the sort of friends who talked outside of work. Can you come visit me? I really don't want to be alone here right now. The urgency in her voice conjured a thousand dark scenarios in my head. I imagined a male renter cornering her alone in the dim and dingy office. I ain't I even thought of Stefan, the manager, going in for a kiss or something creepy like that. What's going on? Are you all right? I heard the click of a lock. Just get here. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Is this fake? Better not be. Shout out to Felix Blackwell. This is his novel. I can't believe how bamboozled I just fucking got. He's an author. And I knew we just gotta be a boozle job. And I'm gonna have to do another story because that was just fucked. And it's the way that the comments just. Do people just think it's real? Well, I hope y'all felt something from that because what I felt was mm, sorry I didn't read your story correctly. And um, don't take it as shade. I thought it was a real one. I personally am not a fan of catching people that way. So that's just my personal thing. You're a great writer. I just didn't want to read it. And I had a feeling. Sorry, guys. The comment down below what y'all think of that. Yes, shout out to him. He is a great writer. I'm um, sure if you look up his name, you will find this story I'm talking that I read that I skimmed through, to be honest. Sorry, I'm a little embarrassed. Like, I just waste both of our times right now. And, okay, I found a short one, a little he he ha ha story to finish off right i'm gonna go back and edit this and be like because we y'all know how we started the video in such good vibes and it's just like sir like i respect the hustle but sir please and please don't submit a story promoting your book that shit will piss me off like and this is why some people do they do read um their stuff before they read it on the journal because shit like this now i know better now i know better am i the asshole for wearing all white to my best friend's wedding and refusing to apologize y'all know how wedding goes y'all know how weddings go don't be acting up respect people's wishes that's all i have to say about that so she says 
my 30 year old best friend invited us my husband and i to go on vacation with them um on an island she told me to bring the dress i wore to my late anniversary dinner for the special dinner event she planned during the vacation i said sure i recently gave birth and that dress is an elegant black lace over new dress that is very classy but also form-fitting when i tried it on when packing i realized it wasn't as flattering and my boobs had a hard time fitting so instead, I packed a cute semi-formal white lace dress instead. I figured it was close enough. This is why y'all run into issues. And I've said this in so many episodes before. Communicate when things don't go as planned. If someone nicely, this is, I'm assuming your friend. Your friend said, girl, can you wear this thing? Because you'll look so cute in it, like, whatever. Like, maybe you say, hey, what should I wear? And your friend said, oh, you should definitely pull it with this one. Like, I love this one. Your friend is expecting you to pull it with this one. I know it's not sure about that, whatever. It doesn't matter. You're probably like, girl, I don't matter. I mean, I was going to wear it, but it'll work out. Like, yes, you think your friend's going to be understanding, but it would have been even better if you said, hey, I tried the dress. That shit looks so fucking ugly. Like, sorry to break it to you. Um, I'm thinking about bringing this one, though, this white one. And your friend immediately would have been like, no, no, no. Like, don't. Like, not to be rude, but like, don't. I don't really like I don't know if you've ever heard, like, it's not good to wear white on someone's wedding. So, do you mind just, like, choosing a different color or something? Like, oh, okay, my fault. Like, yeah, I didn't know that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll choose something else. Do you see how quick that was resolved? Like, do you guys, like, it's like I always see things like this happen and it's like, guys, something's gotta get. Something's gotta get. <sighs> I arrived to the event and found out it was a surprise wedding where she only invited, like, 20 people to the beach beach she hadn't told me it was her wedding because of an inside joke okay i don't <laughs> i kept telling them to get married and watch they will elope next thing we know they are married i'll just make sure it's charging on recording um she was horrified and so was i i didn't bring any other dress plus there was no time to change so i should buy a new dress was there really no time was there really no time also surprised I'm the maid of honor. I offered to either not be the maid of honor or leave the wedding, but she'd rather me stay. Later she blamed me for ruining her wedding because I didn't follow her instructions to wear a specific dress and didn't tell her about changing her mind. Okay. In the case of first of all, she surprised me with the maid of honor shit. Like I took the dress suggestion as like a friendly girly moment, like oh my god, girl, you ate that black dress. Like, can you please wear it again? Because I know you're gonna eat in the pictures, like and it's her event, so you kind of want to look back on. Like, I'm, I'm never going to, I mean, I don't know if I'd be in a situation where I would throw an event and tell everybody what they need to wear. I mean, there is, there's one thing to tell one specific person, like, please wear this versus, um, like, a strict attire thing. And, like, when you go to weddings, you know that you're not supposed to pull up with all white. Like, it's just, you're 30. I'm sure you, assuming you're american and it's like an american thing i want to assume like to not wear white with and then red too is another controversial one her blaming you for ruining the wedding is a little crazy it's a little extra um i'm giving getting bride to vibes about to follow her instructions um i get but when she says she wanted you to be the maid of honor that makes sense because you're going to be in all the pictures and she shouldn't have made your part a surprise then. Like, I don't know. And on that way, when things go sour, I'm like, mm. but then you have to be like, girl, you can't control everything. So, if the girl was smart, I, I don't know. If the girl was a little smart, I would consider the baby thing. I would consider that maybe, you know, or even prepare for the fact that what if she fucks up her dress before she even pulls up so i'm gonna have a backup for her because you're making her you made the choice to make her maid of honor is that too much like i don't know y'all i've never been to a wedding by the way i've never been to one so <laughs> i'm sure the drama be heavy the tea be hot and heavy anyways the friend apologized like she said i'm sorry your wedding was ruined but it's not my fault you should have told me it was for the wedding at the time of packing, I didn't find it appropriate appropriate to get her approval on my outfit. So why the fuck did you take her advice in the first place if you thought it wasn't appropriate to ask her for her opinion on the second one? That's where you lost me. 
Okay, here are the comments. LOL, came here, fully prepared to call you the asshole, but you literally didn't know it was a wedding. Um, that is true. If you don't know it's a wedding, then you're just like, whatever, where the hell, whatever the hell you want. And that's the thing too, is like, if you know it's going to be a surprise and she thinks it's just it's like a little vacation, you know, people wear mad white on vacation. So just have the backup. Yeah, somebody said the bride assumed there wouldn't be any problems. Where her surprise so she didn't have any backups? Yeah. A real friend would be like, you remember that time you showed up to my wedding with all white and then laugh about it? Yeah. We would just laugh about it and be like, girl, girl, you know? But it's like, ooh, the girls are chatting. Yeah, people are saying she just has to make light of the situation and not blame her friend for this. But like, more than anything, have a backup. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just think... Yeah, someone said you didn't know it was a wedding, you were on vacation, and you gave birth a while ago, so your clothes don't fit anymore. I do wish you communicated that the black, like, you could have been like, girl, the black is about to be a no-go, so I'm gonna just try find something else. Like, keep it real cute, casual, you don't need to get her permission, but that would have sent alerts to your friend, like, oh shit, she's not gonna wear the black anymore. Okay, okay. And then the friend could have been like, okay, do you mind showing me what you're wearing? Because I really want to see what heat you pulling up with. Like, period. And then she would have been like, okay, I want to wear this white dress to be honest. And then you, her, your friend would be like, oh no, like, I don't think you want to wear white for this. Like, dress, dress. And the friend would be like, okay, Aggie, I won't wear white. I'll try to find something else. That's it. That's it, you know? But I think after all of this, we're done with, with today's episode. I apologize. I mean, if you liked it, the storage story, great for you. Okay, love that for you. But it really was not my favorite. Like, of all my episodes I've done, it's very few stories I read that I'm like, I want my time back. But thank you for watching as always. I hope you watched all the way through. And if you did, don't forget to follow me on my socials. Um, I need a nap after this. Like, that storage story drained me. Um, so I might take a nap and then I gotta wake up and get some work done. I think that coffee fucked my belly up. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you guys love the new haircut. Purr, 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 purr. But we'll be we'll be back to honestly. I'm just tie this back up. But we're gonna be back to um curls, <sighs> you know, the good old good old stuff. Yeah, we're gonna be back to curls when um probably like soon. Yeah, then sorry, the next episode you see me, I'll definitely be curled up. But um yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate you guys watching of course if you want to submit after reading this um watching this please submit the email down below please give a watch to my zng does chat series Ugh. because that series is more like heart to heart like okay this is a moment period let me shut up my zng does chat is more heart to heart it's just i love my my little zangie just chat and like i said follow me on my socials i hate to say body out because it'd be so fun talking to the camera that's all i have to say thank you for watching comment down below please submit to the story um and if you watch all the way through and you decided that you fuck with me please subscribe don't waste the time thinking about it we finally got to 342 subscribers i had been stuck at um 230 for like a year and now we're just in 345 that's a lot of people that's a lot of people it's not there's no 345 contacts in my phone so i'm gonna take all my little wins and i love y'all <laughs> i'm so excited I, I hate to say bye but um i need to go the fuck to bed or like take some tums or something because my stomach is busting and it hurts and yeah guys thanks for watching <laughs> i gotta just go i'm gonna just go i'm gonna just go bye bye <laughs>